Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, one year on from the most notorious killings of Nigeria's NSARS movement against police brutality and rights groups say that not enough has been done to get justice for the victims of the Lekki Tollbooth massacre. Also, Af Africa's glaciers could all be gone by 2040. The UN's forecast a grim toll for Africa for climate change. It's also warned that massive displacement, hunger and extreme heat are in store for over 100 million of the continent's poorest. And in pink October, we turn our attention to breast cancer awareness in Tunisia. Breast cancer is the most common cancer suffered by women and campaigners are doing what they can to ramp up outreach efforts to get more people in for early screenings. But first, on the eve of the anniversary that at least 10 people were killed after Nigerian security forces violently cracked down on protests against police brutality in Lagos, Human Rights Watch has said that little progress has been made in holding anyone to account. Witnesses to the Lekki Tollgate killings say that soldiers trapped protesters on site before police arrived and fatally opened fire. A judicial panel was set up to investigate the bloodshed, but it has limited authority over what authorities do once it does deliver its recommendations. Meanwhile, the issues that sparked the NSARS protest movement continue to impact the lives of Nigerians. Nicolas Chemin takes a look back to the day of the shootings. This is what the Lekki Tollgate in Lagos looked like a year ago, the morning after the police shot at thousands of protesters. According to Amnesty International, at least 10 people died. The demonstrations were against the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS. It's regularly accused of extortion, torture and extrajudicial killings. The authorities claimed only blank bullets were fired but suspended the unit. Solomon was injured that day and lost his job because of the wound. These are the same people that we vote in and they came back and shoot us. So I believe this time around it won't take place again because these are the same faces that after killing our brothers they came and denied that nothing like that happened. So I can vote a monster back to the set. Samuel has written a song about the protests. He was also injured a year ago during the demonstrations. I'm very angry because our leaders, our leaders did not care about us. The way they are ruling us as if they are slaves. They are ruling us as if we are nobody. I feel sorry for this country. A judicial panel was set up last year to investigate the bloodshed and wider allegations of police abuses. Human rights activists say that there have been no in-depth reforms and that harassment from corrupt police officers continues. Well, truckloads of people turned up Tuesday to join a pro-military sit-in in Khartoum. The demonstrators have been camped out since Saturday, calling for the army to dissolve the civilian government. Now, it entered into a power-sharing deal with the Sudanese military to steer the country's democratic transition following the ousting of President Omar al-Bashir back in 2019. Now, political divisions have deepened since, and civilian officials accuse Bashir loyalists and the military of stirring up unrest. Facebook's shut down two large networks of fake news pages targeting Sudanese users. One network was linked to the RSF paramilitary. The other featured many profiles flagged as supporters of Bashir's former regime and agitating for a military takeover. Now, the UN said that three children were killed when Ethiopian forces launched airstrikes on the northern city of Mekele. Monday's assault on the capital of the Tigray region is an escalation of a year-long conflict between fighters from the Tigray People's Liberation Front and federal forces. The UN's forecast a grim toll for Africa from climate change, despite it being the continent contributing the least to global warming. A new report predicts that already shrinking glaciers of Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Kenya and Uganda's Renzori Mountains will be gone by 2040. It's also warned that massive displacement, hunger and extreme heat are in store for over 100 million of the continent's poorest. Analysts reckon investment of over $3 trillion is needed for mitigation and adaptation to the risks. 
Africa, as this report emphasizes, is warming more and at a faster rate than the global average. The report highlights the urgency of the situation in a continent which, while constituting 17% of the global population, is responsible for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emission and has the least capacity to adapt to the impacts of a warming climate. The cost of inaction is to accept a decade of decline, insecurity, poverty, and continued vulnerability. This is not an outcome we are willing to accept. This report is a call to action at the time we need it the most. Meanwhile, South Sudan's worst flooding since the 60s are also caused by climate change. More than 700,000 people have been affected so far by heavy rains that have destroyed homes, farmland, and forced families to flee. Some states have suffered three consecutive years of flooding, and the downpours are expected to last the rest of the year. Turkey's President Hesep Tayyip Erdogan headed to Angola this week to start a multi-leg tour of the continent. Links between Ankara and Africa have been evolving over the past two decades to encompass business, aid, diplomatic and military support. Growing Turkey's footprint in Africa, President Erdogan is on a diplomatic tour, visiting Angola, Nigeria and Togo. The trip will include business forums, linking up Turkish and local business people in each country. At a press conference in Istanbul before his departure, the Turkish leader was keen to boast of this growing relationship. We're becoming Africa's leading trade partner. Our relations with African countries are not based on colonialism, and we want to succeed together with our brothers and sisters across the continent. Angola's president, Joa Lorenzo, has been looking for investment to help diversify his country's economy, which is currently very oil-reliant. Turkey's presence in Africa has dramatically increased over the past 20 years. In 2003, Turkey had 12 embassies and invested $100 million annually, while in 2021, this has risen to 42 embassies and $6.5 billion in investment. Following in China's footsteps, Ankara has also made its presence felt on the continent through large infrastructure projects, including a national mosque in Ghana, East Africa's largest indoor arena in Rwanda, and a railway project in Ethiopia. By the end of his trip, Erdogan will have visited 30 African countries since 2004. The visit comes ahead of two major events, the Turkey-Africa Business Summit later in October and the third Turkey-Africa Summit in December, aimed at further solidifying Ankara's ties with the continent. Now, October 19th marks International Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Awareness Day. In Tunisia, breast cancer is the most common cancer for women, with around 3,500 new cases and 700 fatalities every year. Despite more and more campaigns raising awareness, screening is often done too late. For Pink October, our correspondents Lilia Blaze and Hamdi Klili followed a mobile screening campaign that's trying to do what it can to ramp up numbers. At sunrise, this train takes off north. Its destination, breast cancer screening for women in the country's interior regions. On va faire ici l'examen clinique des femmes et en cas de suspicion de cancer du sein, on passera au dépistage par l'échographie mammaire. This carriage set up as a clinic offers free screenings at every stop the train makes for two hours. Pas une caravane de justement de, de dépistage, mais pour les cas suspects, on va les suivre. Pour les femmes qui n'ont pas les moyens, on va les aider pour leur prise en charge dans le secteur privé et secteur public. Arriving at the Al Fah station, 60 kilometers from Tunis, the waiting room fills up quickly. Some are coming for their first screening. Poverty and a lack of awareness means screenings, if done at all, often come late, according to the country's health minister. المشكلة الكبيرة في تونس أنه المرأة التونسية أكلي ما تجيش تعدي على زدرها معتها في المرحلة الأولى تجي معتها سرطان في مرحلة 3 سنتيمتر ولا أكثر. 
For specialists, these delays are also linked to something specific to Tunisia, a younger population affected by cancer, with the average age of those diagnosed being 10 years younger than in Europe. Là, on en voit de plus en plus euh, qui ont la trentaine, qui sont jeunement, enfin fraîchement mariés, qui cherchent à avoir des gosses et, et qui se retrouvent avec une boule ou qui, euh, qui se font diagnostiquer un cancer du sein. On peut aurait éventuellement rapporter ça au changement de régime alimentaire et de mode de vie qui devient moins sain entre guillemets. About 45% of cases occur before the age of 50 in Tunisia, according to a study. One reason to ramp up early screening throughout Pink October. Well, that's it for Eye in Africa for now. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Till then, take care.